Let's take a look at this problem. Mindy Company is a wholesale distributor of premium European chocolates. The company's balance sheet as of April 30th is given below. And you see the information all in here, right? We've got cash of 9000 total assets of 300000 capital stock of 180000 so we're in balance. The company is in the process of preparing budget data for May, and a number of budget items have already been prepared. So I'm just going to read these. These are items A through... Uh, I think it's G. Yeah, we'll read these. First, item A. Sales are budgeted at 200,000 for May. Of these sales, 60,000 are for cash. The remainder is is going to be credit sales. One half of the month's credit sales are collected in the month the sales are made, and the remainder is collected in the following month. All of April 30th's accounts receivable will be collected in May. And then B says purchases of inventory are expected to total 120,000 during May. These purchases will all be made on account. 40% of the purchases are paid for in the month of purchase, and the remainder are paid in the following month. All of the April 30th accounts payable to suppliers will be paid during May. C says the May 31st inventory balance is budgeted at 40000 so they give us a, a May 30 inventory balance to work with. Item D, selling and administrative expenses for May are 72000 excluding depreciation. And these expenses will be paid in cash, and depreciation is 2000 for the month. Now I'm on item E, right? item E right in here now. The note payable on April 30th on the April 30th balance sheet will be paid during May with $100 in interest, and all of the interest relates to May. Then IF says new refrigerating equipment costing 6500 will be purchased, and G says, oh it'll be purchased for cash by the way. And item G says the company will also borrow 20000 from its bank by giving a new note payable to the bank for that amount. The new note will appear in one year. Okay, now with all that information, the first requirement, part A says, what's the expected cash receipts from the sale and the expected cash payments of merchandise purchases? Okay, well using the information that was available, we can put this together. In fact, let me center this a little bit better for you, everybody. All right, so the cash sales in May are 60000 We're going to collect that, and we're going to collect the April 30th balance of accounts receivable. That's 54000 right there. Then the May sales, we're going to get 50% of the 140000 That's 70000 So total cash receipts are going to be 184000 Now, in terms of the schedule for cash payments, we're going to pay off the April 30th accounts payable balance, that's 63000 and we're going to pay 40% of May purchases, which were 120000 for 48000 Add those two together, we have total cash payments of 111000 All right, next we look, take a look at requirement two, and it says prepare a budgeted income statement for May. So... What we, what we're gonna, you know, hopefully you can see that this is going to be sales less cost of goods sold, and we're going to have to work through a cost of goods sold uh, section and eventually make it make our way down the income statement. But let me slide up because I think I didn't tackle Part B here, so let's tackle that next. Compute the following for the month. So we're going to come up with the cash a schedule that comes up with cash balance ending, starting with what was available and working our way down. Okay, well here's what that cash budget would look for. We'd have the cash balance of 9000 that's given, right? We'd add the receipts from customers, 184000 We've already calculated that. So we have 193 available. Then we, we're going to subtract off the disbursements, the purchases of inventory, and we calculated that as well. And by the way, let me slide this and show you. Right, so uh, let me bring this to front. Okay, so there's the 184 and the 111. So the 111 winds up down there. I'll move this out of the way. And the 184 was that number right there. Okay, then we just drop in the other information that was given in the problem. Selling and administrative expenses, purchases of equipment. We come up with total cash disbursements. Then we compute the excess of receipts over disbursements. Figure out what's happening with financing. When they told us we're going to borrow twenty thousand, then repay fourteen five, the interest of hundred of hundred dollars is going to cost us cash. So our total financing costs are fifty four hundred. Um, 
So what we see is the excess of cash receipts is 3,500. We're going to add in another 5,400 and wind up with $8,900 as the ending cash balance. After that, we put the budgeted income statement that I talked about just a few minutes ago. So let's take a look and see what that looks like. Okay, so we start off with sales, 200000 Then we have to calculate cost of goods sold. We take beginning inventory. We add in the purchases to come up with what's available for sale. Now, this is all uh, information you should have seen earlier in this course or earlier in another course. Ending inventory, 40000 Subtract that from goods available. We come up with cost of goods sold of 110000 When we deduct cost of goods sold from sales, we derive gross margin of 90000 Add in selling and administrative expenses. Or I'm sorry, subtract that from gross margin. We come up with net operating income. Then that $100 of interest expense we need to deduct. And we come up with net income of 15900 Okay, now we focus on the bottom part of the screen, which is requirement three, which I think is the last part of this problem. Prepare a budgeted balance sheet. So we're going we're gonna to drop in cash, AR, inventory, building and equipment on the asset side, and then we'll drop in the liabilities and uh, the equity as well. Okay, and now you see what the budgeted balance sheet for Minden Company looks like. The cash came from what we've already came up with, 8900 Accounts receivable would be equal to 50% of the 140000 Inventory's 40000 We got that from the income statement. We've already worked that one together. And the building and equipment net of depreciation would be equal to the 207000 plus the 6500 less the 2000 of depreciation, right, for a net of 211500 From that, we have total assets. Then on accounts payable, we need to take 60% of that $120,000 to come up with how much of uh, the purchases will still be outstanding. $20,000 of notes payable um, is going to be outstanding. Capital stocks at $180,000 and retained earnings would be equal to the $42,500 plus the $15,900. I believe that was our net income number, right? Um, we could probably take a look and see that that was the case. Yeah, I'll bring that over. Uh, let's see, bring to front here. Okay, and there's the 15.9, which shows up right there in retained earnings. Okay, I'll get that out of the way now. Oh, sorry. Let me slide this back. So it's back into focus. Okay, and then when we add those all up, um, we wind up with liabilities and equity. It's equal to total assets, and we've solved this problem.